I? I know I'm supposed to be doing Ask a Gardener. Mental Garden. I know it was at Meeker and McGinnis. And here's McGinnis. Oh! There's Meeker. Where am I? Let's see. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad they're redesigning. It's at $39 million. And I know Mental Garden is around here somewhere. Meeker is going to be wonderful when they redesign that. Let's see. Oh wait. There's some milkweed. I must be getting close. Ugh, I wish I had a gardener to ask. Let's see. Really, we could use some investment in here. Oh, these are gorgeous. Oh, I must be getting close. Oh, Bayard, of course. I think it's around here, Bayard, somewhere. Oh, Lentil Garden, wonderful. Okay, got it, all right. Welcome, everyone. I'm here at Lentil Garden, finally, with a special edition of Ask a Gardener with North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, live today on NBK Parks. And I'm looking for Randy. I'm a few minutes late, I think, because I got lost on McGinnis. And I'm thinking, is there a garden over here? And it's, there's supposed to be a garden. I've never been here before. Oh, are those hydrangeas? Oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. Randy? Today we're doing something a little different in our Ask a Gardener series because I have questions and today you're going to be our gardener. Okay, sounds good. So I'm Katie Denny Horowitz from North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. Randy, would you mind introducing yourself? And I'm Randy Sandlin, a neighborhood gardener. And where are we? We're in Lintel Garden. And so right off of McGinnis, right there off is McGinnis. this? This. So it's tell me about this. Our little oasis. It's... Uh, Full of wonderful perennials, uh, roses, hollyhocks, salvias, cosmos. We're a pollinator garden, and you know it's amazing because I was out on McGinnis and I turned the corner and I walked in and I was just blown away by this wafts of perfume oh, and these flowery Good. smells. I mean, wonderful. I love hydrangeas, um, but I just <laughs> as soon as you walk in, you feel instantly cool. Yes. So. Uh, tell me about this 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 garden that I walked into. Like, what is all of this, and and how are you choosing what plants? Well, it's we're a community garden of about forty gardeners. Community garden. What does that mean? That means for a membership, uh, you can get a fifty dollars. You get two keys. One key to the gate and one key to the ship. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And a plot. Wait a second. I can get a key? You can get a key. How do I get a key? You become a member of our community garden. And then I can just get a key and just come in when and I want. And then you can get a key and come in and chill, zen out, flower garden, do anything you want. Unfortunately, Katie, we're at full capacity right now. Oh, God. So there's a waiting list. But I, it's I can imagine. I can first imagine. time ever in our history that we have a waiting list. Amazing. So let's go. Tell me a little bit about this history. Okay, sure. Yes. Um, I started the garden. Uh, I was dating my boyfriend at the time, now my husband. Nice. And uh, he, he, I lived in the East Village and he lived on Graham Avenue. And. He would take me home on Sundays, uh -huh. and I looked over as we were going up on the BQE, and I said, wow, that would make a great garden. Huh. And then he uh, was very political at the time mm -hmm. in gay politics with LID, and he reached out to Ken Fisher. And, and whenabouts was this? This was this in the was 80s, like, 90s, This was in the 90s, 90s uh, okay. like 94. Four, and he reached out to Ken Fisher, who then put him in touch with Alicia Feinstein, uh -huh. who was chief of Brooklyn Parks. Nice. And they had an amazing program that you could take park land and sort of adopt it. And so we came in, and we 
he and I both cleaned it up. It was full of trash. It was we had a small off the highway, fence. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah. And there were mattresses. We graffiti all over the walls and we just cleaned it up and that's how it was started. I mean, that's amazing because what you're what you're telling me, you know, we run this park um, under the Cambridge Park yes. under the Kosciuszko that yes. just opened up, right? And so you're telling me that around 30 years ago there was already this idea of transforming land on and around highways and elevated expressways yes. and sort of giving it back to the people yes. with yes. Uh, with parks and nature and activating it. Yes. Um, that's amazing. That's so that's so forward thinking back then. Well, I'm I don't know about forward thinking on my part, but I was just a southerner and you I had a vision. I had a vision, but I wanted basically being a southerner I wanted to get my hands in the dirt nice and grow things and that's how it sort of started and David and I just we started small that's the maturest part of the garden and then we went around there you said that that's the maturest part but this tree over here wow. is huge yes it is come and sit down and let me show you some photographs all right so this was the tree when we had, I guess it was in 97. It was dedicated to Joe Lentil's father. Joe Lentil, you mean our former assemblyman, Joe right. Lentil? Okay. Yes. And so it was named for his father. And so that's why it's the Lentil Garden. Exactly. Of course. Yes. And that's Joe and his brothers. Amazing. Planting. The cherry tree, which is... Wait, which cherry tree? This? This cherry tree. So this little thing right here... Yes. Is, is, ...has now grown into be this beautiful... Yes. ...flowering... Yes. ...behemoth. Yes. Amazing. And it is so gorgeous in spring. It's just full of pink blossoms, and then it all falls down, and it looks like pink snow. Oh, beautiful. And it's just gorgeous, and it's a great... Uh, place for birds and we're a pollinator garden so we have lots of bees lots of birds and butterflies so tell me how do you who comes here uh, and how if you're not a member how do you get to enjoy this beautiful well location we try to we normally have open hours but due to COVID the city closed us down mm -hmm. it only couldn't invite the public in and so only the maintenance of our 40 gardeners would come in and clean it up and sure. do all of that. I'm sorry did you say 40 gardeners? 40 gardeners and a lot of them are families so this whole area will be there'll be twins running around barefoot and kids we have a oh, sandbox amazing. over there and Scott's over what is there. That? Is that one of your 40 gardeners? That's one of my 40 gardeners. And oh hi Scott! Scott. Scott is the best. <laughs> Scott, can you tell us about? Um, do you mind if we talk to sure. Scott? I have I have a few questions Scott for your gardener. Scott is wonderful. So, Scott, hi, I'm Katie. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice little to meet you. little little hello. So, tell me what you're doing over here. So right now, I'm just pulling out some weeds. We're yeah. kind of getting into the, getting into the summer, so there's not too much weeds because um, the plants that we have are grown in. But we have a bunch of roses here in front are my columbines going to seed we have a few bee balms blooming the little purple flowers milkweeds in back a nice big hydrangea still getting ready to bloom big sunflower coming up a bunch of day lilies here in front this uh white flowers are a yucca which is a perennial that grows oh here. yes oh you know what and i correct me if i'm wrong but actually in the middle of mcginnis there's some yucca Oh yeah, right? totally. Yeah, and so you have some in here too. That's a nice little echo of the of the highway outside. I saw I you know, I got lost out on the other side of the fence and I saw some of that milkweed and I knew I was getting close. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a it's a nice one that runs all through our garden. So here. how do you choose which plants to plant? When I started doing this spot, there was already a few here that I've kind of been fostering, like the roses and the daylilies. Yeah. Um, a few I really wanted to plant myself. Like I love the columbines. And so last year I had three, and then this year they reseeded, so I had about nine. Whoa. We'll see how many come back next year. Maybe 12. Maybe more, yeah. And uh, yeah, this uh, hydrangea too, I love hydrangeas, and that one's really taken hold and doing really well also. I'm excited for it to bloom later this summer also. That's amazing. 
Um, great. So you said you had 40 gardeners. I had 40 gardeners. Thank you, Scott. And so are there are there any more back here? Or is, there this, are, is this the whole garden? But just so you know, I with the plot that folks get, it's a blank sort of canvas, and we have lots of gardeners. And if I can just take you over here and show you this garden, this little garden is one that she is a natural dye artist and so she planted like pea shoots and cosmos and oh, rebecca that she's going to later turn into dyes oh how functional and uh and indigo and it's all from seed but she's sort of like nurturing it and it's coming up and that's amazing so i don't think i've heard of a like a natural dye producing garden that's so smart so we here at mental garden like everyone to just sort of be creative and add to what they want in sure. their space and nice. like scott and his columbine which are right. gorgeous right so and Katie, let me mention that we have a hive of bees over here. Oh, great. And we have two beekeepers, Angie and... Um, so, they're busy as can be. So, how many bees do you think you have? I have no idea. But they're, as you can see, they are buzzing away. I'm going to try to take a closer look just a bit right here. You're a brave lady. I know. <laughs> Wonderful. When did you when did y'all install those bees? We installed those, I guess, about three years ago that oh, okay. Angie contacted me and said, I have a hive of bees. Would you like those? And I said, I would love those. And has she talked about the benefits of having the bees in the garden? Yes. Um, we it's have bees and we have uh, lots of milkweed and we have um, other bees and of course I can't remember those bees but leaf cutter bees and she installed a little area over here that for the leaf cutters right and uh, so we have tons of pollinators here right and so for for our folks at home who probably know what it means to be a pollinator what what exactly does that mean if, if when you say it's a pollinator garden or what well, does that mean it's it means basically we can grow flowers uh -huh. but and we're giving back to the environment unfortunately we can't grow any vegetables because of what's in our soil lead which Greenpoint has the highest in the borough. And we're right here by the BQE. So I wouldn't want to eat anything vegetable wise right here. So it's just a little green flowering oasis. Oasis full of roses that smell fragrant. And it's all about your senses and being coming and sitting on the bench and just sort of relaxing. So I, it, there seems to be some sort of woodland area over here. Yes. So I'm really interested in, in kind of seeing what's on the other side of this path. Sure, yes. I mean, all, all of a sudden I feel like I'm in a forest. <laughs> that's the great like, thing. Are we upstate? Yes, that's the greatest thing. It's like we have a lot of kids come here and they These turn. Are fantastic. Thanks, thanks. Can I sit on it? Yes, yes. We have a lot of kids that come to this point and they look at our path and they just run and you would never yeah. know that we're right by the BQE. Right. It's like being upstate. Right. So is this another one of your gardeners? This is one of my gardeners. They say, Hi. It's Cameron. Hi. Cameron, we have a few questions to ask you. Would you mind participating ah. on a, our Ask a Gardener show at yeah, MBK sure. Parks? Sure. So, how long have you been a gardener? Uh, here, like three years. Specifically at Lentil Garden? Specifically at Lentil, like for so like So, are you one of the folks who have a specific plot that you take care of, or just general? Yes, I have a plot like up at the front. Y'all probably really? passed it when you came in. Yeah, what are you growing there? Um, mostly daisies. Nice. And last year I had a bunch of sunflowers. Beautiful. I have a couple this year, not quite as many. Nice. I'm a little behind on the seed planting. So, <laughs> I see... 
What is that? It's our pond. You guys have a pond? Yeah. Is that is that There's, real? Is that lotus real? Yes, that's yeah, real. Yeah, it's real. That I know it looks goodness. it just like opened just for you. Yeah. I have a lotus tattoo. Oh, oh okay. I love them. So Katie, this is our This is our little pond um, that the bees need to drink water from. Of course. So they don't like clean water. They like dirty water full of nutrients and minerals and all. So we'll sometimes see a lot of busy buzzing around over there. But they'll come and they'll land on the water lily or the duckweed or the water hyacinth and take a drink and then go on their way that's beautiful i don't think i don't think we've we've had a pond in any of our uh, episodes before oh. i think we should think about having one of those under the k yeah they're yeah, great they're, I, I love lotuses i, I used to live in, in thailand so oh. it's, it's one of my Ooh. brings me back yeah there's um, like tiny fish in there uh, yeah oh yeah. no we have tiny fish that eat the mosquitoes larvae and we're a solar pump that runs the water constantly when the sun shines. How sustainable. Yes. So, um, are these more plots for more community plots. members? More plots. This is from our GSEF grant. Wait, that... what, what is, what's GSEF? Oh my God. Oh, are you talking about the Greenpoint Community Environmental Fund? You know I am. Oh. ExxonMobil settlement yes. from the state? Yes. Oh, yes. So many investments went into our Greenpoint green spaces. So this was one of them. Yes. And they yes. helped you do this. They did. That's and, amazing. Uh, our partner was Grow NYC, who made it all happen. Sure. And they brought in several corporate events and they built this, dug it all out, created our path along there with our cedar logs right. and built the pond and they were like GSEF the did all of that GSEF did all amazing. of that amazing amazing what a sustainable amazing. investment especially if you're sort of getting this diverse you know revenue streams in order to sustain you know the the gardens and the and yes. the you know the environmental programs that you all are working with yes and it took a vacant sort of area here that was not used and they designed this sort of container garden that right. all these plots are full of you know these are uh, gardeners right that come and this is their plot and they come and take care of it and it's a lot of families and uh and you know i see that we're still along the bqe oh so this is the entrance this is the this entrance, is the entrance to, the to the bqe, BQE. Interesting. yes yes and i think i remember you telling me a story about um that this plot of land was actually designated as a park way back when the bqe was built yes is that like true? in 47 i oh, believe my word. that there were houses here and a lot of the old uh, neighbors um would say there used to be like a little walkway that would connect the Bayard Street to the uh, to Graham, and but it was just sort of poorly maintained. A um, lot of crime, a lot of uh, drug use. Sure. Yep. And so now we are on. Doesn't the, feel like that anymore. The Woodland Garden. Yeah. And Cameron will talk about who designed that, and talk some more so I see these ferns so wh who designed this Thomas he works uh, actually at the Central Park Conservancy nice. um, and so he and a couple of other people kind of headed up this it was kind of just totally overgrown so we had a bunch of people come in and clean it out and then they did a bunch of really small like plug plants um, a couple years ago and that was kind of the takeoff. Everything is native back here. Um, so it also is, in theory, lower maintenance, which is great. Yeah, so I see these are birch trees. Yes. Um, are these all birch trees for the most part? Uh, no, there's like a mix. So Randy, many years ago, planted the birch trees. Um, and I think the city had already planted these evergreens. Um, and then there's also hollies. Uh, and the hollies provide bird uh, food throughout the winter. 
So we have birds that overwinter, like, in this space as well. Of course, yeah, with yeah. evergreens. Yeah, no, it's interesting because a lot of those choices, the river birch, the holly, the evergreens, are choices that we also made at Under the Cambridge Park, which oh, okay. also Wonderful. abuts. Yeah. And, and part of that was because it's year-round, mm -hmm. you know, because it stays green, and also because it absorbs the toxins from, you know. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, but this is amazing. I don't feel like I am, uh, you know, surrounded by cars right now. I, yeah. I literally feel like I just drove an hour upstate to walk through uh, a forest. Great. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Like, it's, it's really nice also, like, with the mature trees. I think that really helps. It gives you a totally different atmosphere than, like, the rest of the neighborhood. Randy, you planted all these river birches? I planted the river birches and uh, the copper birch over there. But these were here when I sort of arrived. Uh, this was, I think, when they did the tour of the houses down, they planted these evergreens mm. and the hollies as a sound barrier for, for the neighbors. Over right, there. okay, now, because now I'm, now I'm thinking, may, may I? Yeah. So now I'm thinking, this wall is actually, this is the highway. Yes. This is the wall to the BQE. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now I'm I'm placing myself. <laughs> so Yeah, it's like an attractive on ramp, sort of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love the stone, the the, the workmanship. Yeah, um, exactly. So what happened here? What are these logs? These logs are left over from the GSEF grant and they will then go to NYU. Uh, is doing a program called Bees Alive and they it's an EPA grant and it's more about using the as educational sure tool um, with the eco schools and we're having classrooms and learning more about natives and oh um, is that is that what the space is over that here is that is and they're in the early stages of making this garden uh, you say they, you, is that NYU? NYU? Oh, nifty. And the eco schools. And on Sundays they come and plant uh, little tiny plants from Greenbelt. So, oh, Greenbelt is the, the native nursery, right? right? Okay, yes, great. Yes. And so those logs will go into the design here of making uh, boundaries of where these little areas are. So this is sort of since you're planting the seedlings and you're going to the nursery this is this is sort of the beginning this is the very beginning it happened about i would say pre-covid unfortunately covid stopped a lot of this naturally yep and uh but before that this was a educational hub i mean nyu was amazing they brought the eco schools and they would plant spring bulbs and they would plant natives and sure uh it was just it's great to see kids running around in this yeah space. i can imagine so i can i can also imagine that this maybe looks like what the beginning looked like back in the 90s yes. when you entered yes. it so so you know we're going to be seeing here that lush aromatic gorgeous yes. oasis um, yes. and right now it's sort of like a, a workshop for for local schools yes. um, driven by NYU that's amazing yes. um, is there anything else you want to add before no before I we... don't I don't think so we're just we you know we are always looking for members are you all on Instagram we are on what's Instagram. your handle lentil garden at lentil, lentil garden. garden yes that makes a lot of sense and we are always looking for members we have a waiting list now but you know we we try to fit people in as everywhere we can and we're sort of taking on the the native woodland area and so we'll be looking in the future for for members. Well, you can count me in. I okay. will add the waiting list. Um, okay, I got you down. Yeah, well, thank <laughs> you, Randy. And again, it's Katie from North Brooklyn Parks Alliance at MBK Parks. Thank you for uh, turning in on this Wednesday afternoon. Gorgeous day. Um, thank you for this joining us for the special edition of Ask a Gardener. You can check us out next Wednesday live at 1230 at NBK Parks. Um, in the meantime, 
at Lentol Garden is where you can find out information about this amazing oasis along Thank the BQE. Thank Thanks, Katie. Randy. Thank Good you to see so you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. <laughs>